Good evening, blessed Passover. It's the night of the 14th day of the first month, which is Abib, the night which we have been longing for, where Christ ate the Lord's Supper, instituted the Lord's Supper uh, in Jerusalem with his disciples. And this is the Lord's Supper which is the 14th day of the first month, which we have been reading from the books and all the books, Bible and the Spirit of Prophets, Patricks and Prophets, all testifying about this uh, first month on the 14th day, counting from the new moon. And I say, blessed Passover to everyone. And may God bless you and give you the blessings of this feast. This is the night where our forefathers left Egypt. At night, after partaking of the lamb and putting the blood on the doorposts three times, as in Exodus chapter 12. And this is the night of the Passover. And I say, well done for you to keep all these times and seasons in which God has uh, warned us to keep these times and seasons which were changed in the dark ages but should be restored back to their original places after 2300 days when God enters the sanctuary when God entered in 1844 in the Holy of Holies and these times have to be brought back first it was the Sabbath and now the Passover and now we are it was instead Christ instituted the Lord's Supper on the night of the 14th, which is today, the 8th of April, 2020. So we are happy to be glad keeping this time so that we get the needed blessings. And this time it was not a joke. It was two things happening. Some, some had firstborns killed, slaughtered by the angel at night and where the angel was passing over where the door had blood pass over that's where the la the, the name pass over it was passing over the door with blood where they had killed a lamb and eaten with their loins gathered ready to fly ready to to run away from egypt heading towards the red sea with the leadership of moses this is the night so we are happy to commemorate that night, which is done for two reasons in Patrick's book. Prophets, you see, it's for two re reasons. For them that walked out of Egypt, they were pointing backwards to their sojourn. And them that have Christ who died for them on the cross, they have to remember that a feast which points to Christ's death so that they know they were being released to the, from the bondage of sin. So everyone here has a significance of keeping this uh, feast because it points to the time when we will be living without sin. So this is the 14th day, meaning the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. For seven days we shall eat unleavened bread. Yeah, so there's no rice, there's no salsa, there's no bread with leaven it's all with the bread which is unleavened when you read it in Leviticus chapter 23 it says you must eat unleavened bread you must it's a must m-u-s-t must eat there is a reason why God said we must eat it why to take away all the leaven it says we have to point it's a shadow to point forward to the time when we live without sin so we have to take that to point to the time where we live without living so there is no living in our houses all the baking powders all the bread with living out of the home nobody is we have spring cleaned all our premises and we have accommodated for God to come and visit us on his feast we've cleaned our hearts we conceal reconcile one to another remember all, way, all the sins where we have sinned 
so that we enjoy the seasons of the Passover or the Lord's Supper. We have all taken the Lord's Supper, all of us, isn't it? So that's the time to take the Lord's Supper. That's why it is Supper. Supper means at night. It's not taken during the day. It's taken at night. Supper. Ask any child who goes to school. Lord's Supper is something taken at night. So you go wherever you go. When they were eating the lamb, they were eating it at night. And we have taken it at night. Not during the day, but at night. So God has given us the privilege. I have chosen a, a short lesson for us to learn in this after we have taken the Lord's Supper, the bread and wine, washing out our, our feet and make sure we had spring cleaned all the premises and taken and wash our feet and take the Lord's Supper. After all that, then we have to, you know, spend some part of the night discussing and encouraging each other on the importance of these uh, messages. So let's go to Matthew chapter 24. You'd find that uh, there is a prophecy there, a tiny prophecy that we can learn. Chapter 24, start with the verse from, uh, you know, people are expecting the coming of Christ. And as they are expecting the coming of Christ, um, it's so weird to others because they are expecting to hop in the cloud and yet he is coming to establish the kingdom. If he doesn't come this Passover, he, we wait a, again amid another Passover. That's his time. So, but in our days, most people will hear that instead Christ is establishing the kingdom on earth. And then in those days, there was a warning which God gave us. He says, what, what shall we hear? And this warning, some, after reading this warning, they think, you know, uh, he shall not come to step on the earth because of that warning. But let's analyze it correctly. Start from verse 27. Let's hear a word from 27. For as the lightning cometh no, no. out of the right, east. Right, let's go back to 25, right? Behold, I yeah. have told you before. Right. So we saw in it, we, we saw... In verse 24, it talks about the kingdom, that the gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed before his coming. Verse 20, verse 14, yeah? Verse 14. Uh -huh. And this gospel of the kingdom uh -huh. shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. Right. And then shall the end come. So we have been given a warning of the end. One sign is the gospel of the establishment of the kingdom, right? And next we have to go to verse 24. What does it say? There will be somebody, after hearing that Christ is coming on earth, they will start to say, uh, when you hear, Christ has given a warning there. Yeah? Verse 24. Mm -hmm. For there shall arise false Christ. Right. And false prophets. Right. And shall shew great signs and wonders. Right. In our days, there's another sign to show that he's coming. False prophets false signs so it's like when you plant when you plant those who are farmers might agree with me when you plant and you put some cabbage you know what when there are tears supposed to come there they look like a cabbage do you know that so so that they disguise the true cabbage and when they, there will be people who will come now as christ have you seen people uh, making images even in the clouds which look like a person yeah and then everybody who sees that image say, oh what is that what is that all this has been predicted there will be false Christ in the air in the, in the clouds there will be even people coming to, to preach and saying I'm Christ I've come we have seen all those things in the, in the last days so we have been warned by God that there will be people which will resemble what is up, uh, actually supposed to come what is it that we are expecting? We are expecting Christ to come. But before he comes, we will see people giving imitations of him, saying they are Christ. Isn't it? So we have been told today. What, what else? For there shall arise false Christs. Right. And false prophets. Now, we have people who will imitate Christ. Christ himself. And then we have also people who will imitate prophets.
but there will be false prophets. Meaning, if they imitate the resemblance of Christ, it means we are expecting Christ. So what what comes first? The false falsehood, yeah, of Christ. So if they also imitate their prophets, when we know they are false prophets, we should expect a true one. They will never imitate something that is not there. They will. It's like any tear, any tear, yeah. In Shona they say Sora, Sora, Sora. Rinwe inda panufa nana nimbe weyacho. Those who understand Shona, in English, a tear will resemble the original plant or the original grain. So. When we have false prophets, if you and I believe they are false prophets, then there is a true one. So what happens is certain, the devil knows we are supposed to have a prophet. And what does he do? He gives a counterfeit. The devil knows we are expecting Christ to come on earth. What does he do? He preludes <coughs> that event with false Christ. He makes that event so that people say, oh no, when they hear, it's like a wolf, wolf. When somebody always say, wolf, there's a wolf, there's a wolf. When the day the actual wolf comes, you always say, it's been making a lot of noise, saying wolf, wolf. So it's the same day. When the actual wolf comes, you will not, you will not realize there's a wolf because when the person utters wolf, wolf, we say, oh, we are used to it. Oh, you are used. So that's exactly what happens before Christ comes. There will be false Christ so, so that people get used to that and say what? Ah, we are used. They say there was Christ there. Oh, they say Christ was coming on that other year. They said, you know, false Christ first and also false prophet. But no, for, for real, there is true Christ, right? For real, there is a true prophet, right? This is what we have been warned to expect. And what? Behold, mm -hmm. I have told you before. Right. Wherefore, mm. if they shall say unto you, mm -hmm. Behold, right. he is in the desert. Did you hear that? Now, because we know he's going to step through the prophecies, we know he's going to step down this time. It's not yet the time when he's coming to be in the clouds and we walk like in First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. It's not yet that time. This time is when he's coming to step on earth that the prophecies are pointing to. So what does the devil say? The devil creates a counterfeit of people also saying, no, he isn't there. Oh, he's in the desert. Oh, he isn't. Because the actual Christ is also coming somewhere. Listen to this verse. Mm -hmm. Behold, I mm -hmm. have told you before. Right. Wherefore, mm. if they shall say unto you, mm -hmm. Behold, right. he is in the desert. He is in the desert. Go not forth. Right. Do you see there are false Christ or pro false prophets? Meaning there is a Christ who comes somewhere. It's a false. And there are false prophets who predict that Christ. Do you understand? Who say, I told you, he's now in the desert. He's not, so we we'll, we'll, we will hear a lot of gospels to show us to 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 disguise those who are expecting Christ in Jerusalem. You understand? Uh -huh. Wherefore, mm. if they shall say unto you, mm. Behold, mm -hmm. he is in the desert. Right. Go not forth. Don't go. Behold, mm -hmm. he is in the secret chambers. Right. Believe it not. Don't believe. Right. For as the lightning cometh out of the east right. and shineth even unto the west, right. so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Where does the lightning shine? Normally, do we see the lightning shining from the east? When you see the lightning when it is raining, where is it lighting from? In the sky. But the verse says, the lightning shineth out from where? From the east. Not from the north, not from the south, not from the west, but from the east going to... So what it actually means is that this is how Christ will come. What? Like a lightning. It's not in the cloud. In the cloud is not a lightning. It's not in the... It's not in, it's the coming in the cloud is clearly said 
He will, he will descend with the cloud from heaven. Let's hear from First Thessalonians chapter uh, 4, verse 16. Is it like a lightning in the cloud in the east? Listen. For the Lord himself mm -hmm. shall descend from heaven with a shout, right. with the voice of the archangel, right. and with the trump of God, right. and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Right. Did we hear lightning from the east? From Thessalonians. What did he say? For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Did you hear something descending? It's not coming from the east. It's not coming from the west. It's not coming from the north. It's, not, it's time now we should read and rightly divide the word of truth and come up with a good meaning from a verse than to say oh, blanket it and throw a blanket at it. This is what we saw oh, from, from the east. But he says the lightning comes from the east. And when it comes in the cloud, it's not from the east. It's coming from, it's descending from heaven. So this one, where he is like a lightning from the east, should make something in a brain which rightly divides the word of truth. It should make you understand which coming is this. These are different comings. Here yeah, it's just like a lightning. There was no warning. That's why I say, beware, I'm coming like a what? A thief. Is as lightning coming from the east. Yeah? And what? Matthew 24. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, mm -hmm. and shineth even unto the west, right. so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Right. So did the verse prove that he's not coming? He actually said, it comes like a lightning. Where? It's in the east. But those days, there will be false prophets and false Christ. Who know, because the devil knows. He's about, it, the devil is a diligent Bible student knows the Bible in and out and he knows by seeing the signs that he's about to come and he creates false Christ and false prophets so that they disguise the very elect. So, but here the devil will inspire the false Christ to pretend that Christ has come and people flock to see Christ when he's not the, the Christ. But our good point is that they will be pretending to be Christ who has come where? On earth, not in the cloud. Because we're expecting Christ to come on earth, not only in the cloud, but to establish the kingdom on earth. So he knows that point. He creates false Christ, law is in the desert, Law is in the way to disguise people and people will say, we have, been, we have heard about this. This is all wrong. And false prophets will also predict their, their, these incidences. You know, we have a lot of prophets these days. And let me tell you one thing. There can be several prophets in a given time. There is one. Always there is one prophet at a time. So when you see a lot of prophets everywhere, know that there is one. But the devil will disguise the world by bringing a lot of prophets so that people say, oh, we are, still, we, are, we are fed up of it. Oh, this one is another one. This one, I saw someone putting a very big picture of people who he terms their prophets. These are good prophets, people. I said, wherever in the Bible have you seen them too? When it was Samuel, he was the only one. When it was Laban, I mean, Nathan, it was, he was the only one. He, when it was, who, Prophet Eli, everyone mentioned it all. Maybe in rare occasion you'll find two. But it was always one voice so that people are not disguised by several voices. But in our days, each corner you go is a prophet. But know for surety, if they are there in these corners, there's a, there's a true one. And one other sign you should know, if you go to somebody and he says to you, I'm a prophet, know for sure you've met a wrong one. The Bible, even Sister White, in the Bible, she has never claimed that title. She never, she never said I'm a prophet. 
She, she will tell people, did I say that? No prophet will come and introduce him or herself as a prophet. And then it's always given to the people to decide because spiritual things are spiritually discerned. And we have no message to identify prophets. We have a message to prepare people to meet the Lord. But if you want to preach a prophet message of identification, that is a false message. Messages should not be identifying who the messenger is. Otherwise, people should use their common sense, their spiritual eyesight to identify prophets. There should be no, you know, someone who introduces, I'm so and so, I'm a prophet, so and so. Once you are like that, people will just have forced submission. When Christ came, he never, that's why most of the time he will ask his disciples, what do people say I am? And they also, some they think you are early, some may think, some may think this one. And then he asked a direct question, what do you think I am? Up until even the disciples were doubting him. That's a prophet. Even his own disciples did not know he was a prophet. They didn't. They all ran away when he was on the cross. If they knew he was a true prophet, a son of God, they wouldn't have run away. They did not know. They didn't know. If you now introduce yourself as a prophet, it's one sign and symptom. You are a wrong one. A prophet should never introduce. It should only utter what God says they should say, people should do. And that's it. End of. A prophet should not be identifying himself or herself and say, I'm prophet so and so. Some are even signing it. Yours for surety, prophet so and so. There is no message like that in the Bible. All the prophets, when they wept, they were only believed after their death that they were prophet. Even the very sister what? Everybody now starting to quote her after her death. Before she died, people will just look at her with doubts of scrutiny. That's what a true prophet is. If you are a prophet and people call you and even phone, hello prophet, how are you prophet? There is no message like that in the Bible. The Bible will never have a message of identity of a prophet. You will never. Even Christ did not identify himself. When they said, you are saying you are the son of God, he will answer and say, it's you who said. Yeah, whatever I purpose. You will never. Because there is no burden to identify who you are. And even if the people ask you, who are you? People should understand who you are only by spiritual eyesight. If you have no spiritual eyesight, you will never learn the prophet until the prophet finishes you. Her job description, what he has been sent to do. That's when people will say, That was surely a prophet. But not to say, Right, I've come to you, I need to tell you something that God has told me. I'm a prophet, so and so. No, for surety, there is no way in the Bible. There is no way in the Bible where people were identifying themselves as such. Normally, we have a burden to preach a message. And nobody should say, oh, so it means he's a prophet. No. We will learn after a prophet has finished the, the mission, then we know there was a prophet. Even Sister White, we knew. Even when all other messengers in the Bible preached, people were doubting them. People everywhere, they were doubting them. This is why they killed Christ. They were doubting him. They didn't even know. It. They had no proof of divinity. But I'm seeing people elevating each other. You know, God says, can you know, God, when you, you elevate one another? Well, they were bypassing Christ. You remember that time when when they entered the temple and one of the, one of the priests said to, to the disciples, oh, your leader, your, your, your Messiah, your leader, does not pay the temple fee. You know, Peter, with his, you know, impulses, quickly answered and said, no, we will pay. He will pay. He will pay. 
And that grieved Christ. Why? Because he learned that Peter doesn't even know who he was. This is what grieved Christ. Because he saw in the answer that was produced by Peter, that Peter, Peter did not surely know who he was following up until that time. Why? Because it was a normal custom that all prophets and messengers in the temple did not pay the temple fee. So he, while Peter answered, he will pay, he was actually saying he's not a prophet. He's not a son of God. That's why he should pay. So that's how it grieved. When you go, go back even to ages and you find that story and you see how Peter grieved Christ by acknowledging that Christ should pay. That's why Christ said to ask Peter, who, who pays tax in your in your in the world? The the monarch or the, 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 the people, the ordinary people. And Peter says, It's the ordinary people. What he was actually saying, I'm a monarch, I'm a son of God. And we are saying I should pay. Do you understand? So that grieved Christ because even when Peter was walking with him, sometimes you will say, Right. Truly, for sure, he's a son of God. After he has healed somebody who was a leper, or after he has made somebody to see, yeah, and it will flash to the disciples. He truly is. After he fed the people with five loaves and two fishes, this made people, ha! Huh? Why? Because all along they didn't believe he was. Do you understand? So there is no better in a message of any prophet. To identify himself as a prophet so here we are being told in that verse previous verse you, you read yeah go ahead for as the lightning mm -hmm. cometh out of the east mm -hmm. and shineth even unto the west right so shall also the coming of the son of man be right for wheresoever the carcass is listen, listen to the next statement we have proved that the lightning shineth from the east so now he's saying wheresoever yeah. For wheresoever the carcass is, yeah, there will the eagles be gathered together. Amen. Now that's verse twenty-eight, right? Verse twenty-eight is referring to the identity, yeah, to the identity of God's church on earth when Christ will come. Where is God's church on earth when Christ should come? When? Where is it? Where the carcass is? Repeat the verse. For wh for wheresoever the carcass is, right? There will the eagles be gathered together. Right. Now, what is he implying? And we saw in 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 Revelation chapter five, where he was talking of the four beasts in front of the of the of the of the go to that chapter, Revelation chapter five, four beasts in front of. The throne of God if you find it so we are talking about the four beasts that's where we saw an eagle among us the four beasts in 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 Revelation chapter chapter 4 have you found five yeah you found it find the same thing and Desc describing what was around the throne yeah mm -hmm. says and I behold, and lo, in the midst of the throne, right, and of the four beasts, right, and in the midst of the elders, right, stood a lamb as it was been slain. Go to Revelation four, you find how they looked like these four beasts. It's one one looked like a calf, yeah, right. And the first beast right? was like a lion. One. And the second beast like a calf. Two. And the third beast had a face of a man. Right. And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. Right. Look for the verse where he says, when these four beasts, when he was looking for someone to open the, the, the seven seals from the book, and um, the four beasts would answer. Right? In Revelation chapter 5. So we want to see, because we have been told here by Matthew chapter 24, that where the carcass is, there the eagles are. So that's our, our lesson for tonight. What is he actually saying here? What is Christ actually saying when he says, who can open the book? There was a book in the middle of the throne and there was a question, who can, right? 
And I saw in the right hand mm-hmm. of him that sat on the throne mm-hmm. a book mm-hmm. written within on the back side. Right. Oh. And I and I saw in the right hand of him mm. that sat on the throne a mm-hmm. book written within mm-hmm. and on the back side. Right. Sealed with seven seals. Right. And I was and I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, mm. Who is worthy to Who open is worthy the book to open the and book? lose the seals thereof? Right. I see I want where the other beast will answer. They says thou was slain. When he says John says when I wept because no one was worthy to open. In there when you are reading. Mm-hmm. Maybe let's go with it. Yeah, scroll go with it. And I wept much mm-hmm. because no man was found worthy to open to read the book, mm-hmm. neither to look thereon. Mm-hmm. And one of the elders said unto me, mm-hmm. Weep not. Mm-hmm. Behold, mm-hmm. the lion of the tribe of, tribe of Judah, the root of David, mm-hmm. had prevailed to open the book right. and to lose the seals, the seven seals thereof. Right. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and mm-hmm. of the four beasts, mm-hmm. and in the midst of the elders, mm-hmm. stood a lamb as it had been slain, mm-hmm. having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. Mm-hmm. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Mm-hmm. And when he had taken the book, right. the four beasts and four and twenty elders... Listen to these four beasts. What did they say? Fell down before right. the lamb. Do you see having, these four beasts? Yeah. Having every one of them right. harps right. and golden vials full of odors, right. which are the prayers of the saints. Right. And... And they sang a new song, right? saying, mm. Thou art worthy. Did you hear that the four beasts are singing? Now, we have been told this, this, this beast are four. One, like a cow. Two, yeah. men. Lion. Eagle. But listen to what they say. What verse is that? Verse 9. Verse 9, yeah. And they sung a new song, mm-hmm. saying, mm. Thou art worthy to take the book right. and to open the seals thereof. Do you hear that the, the beasts are talking? So do you see that they are not actually beasts? What are they? Right, let's, uh, let's hear them. Yeah. For thou wast slain mm-hmm. and hast redeemed us to God by the blood of every kindred. What did the beast say? Redeemed you have us. redeemed us. Who is being redeemed there? The beast. So, what are these four beasts? They are representatives of the whole earth from creation to the end. So, the people are divided into four beasts. Do you get my point? There is a beast which represents the the time for Adam, from Adam to the Noatic. That beast is the one that looks like a man right and then the beast that represent the period from the noatic to the crucifixion is the beast that looks like a calf did you see that one looks like a calf yeah and the beast that represent the period that starts from crucifixion to the time of let's say 1844 right the disciples there and those who went through those who went through persecution the dark ages and the like who, who which beast can represent such a lion they were brave look at how they were being persecuted they are represented by the beast which looks like a lion and then those who from 1844 until the coming of christ they are under the beast which is represented by the eagle did you hear let's go back to matthew chapter 24 it says for the Christ will come like a lightning, as a lightning from the east. And then he says, where the carcass is, the eagles will be there. So he's now telling us that the church which will be waiting for the coming of Christ will be where the carcass is, the eagles that represent those redeemed. Because they say that in Revelation chapter 5. That thou we have redeemed us. Do you see the beast represent people? And which one? This section of a people represented by the eagle. Huh? So where the eagle? Which 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 one? Which is the last one? The ones that are being sealed. 
These are what are represented by the eagle. We are under the beast of the eagle. So you have seen the four beasts. It has passed through the whole four divisions of the world's history. And our division has the beast representing us is the eagle. Do you understand? Four beasts, one looked like a, a man. The next one looked like a calf. The next one looked like a lion. The next one looked like an eagle. So this is where my lesson is. If the eagle, in Matthew chapter 24, someone was saying, Lo, there will be false Christ. Saying, Lo, he's here. He's in a desert. He's in what? And false prophets pointing to that Christ who is on earth. Proves that he's coming on earth. Why? Because there are false ones coming on earth. And there are prophets in the last days. Why? Because there are false prophets already. The fact that there are many proves they are false. If there was a true one, it all, always is one. But if there are many, then there is a false. Do you understand? So here, then we, are, we, we go into the verse which says, as a lightning from the east. Yeah? Is how the, cry, how the Son of Man shall arrive. Why the east? Why not lightning from the north? Why not lightning from the West? Why not na now? And after saying that statement, it says, where the carcass is, and the eagles will be there. What do the eagles do? When there is a dead animal, a dead animal is a carcass, is it? When there is a dead animal, the eagles surround it. Why? To eat the flesh of that animal. Now, what have we been given to do today? To eat the Lord's Supper. And what is the Lord's Supper? The, the, the dead carcass of the body of Christ. Huh? Where shall we find the church in the last days? Is where the carcass is. Those who are taking the Lord's body, which is the carcass, and represented by the group under the eagle. Do you understand? The eagle, which is from 1844 until Christ comes, that is the eagle group that are represented by that group. They are taking the Lord's Supper when? At the appointed time. And when should they be taking that Lord's Supper? They should be taking it in Israel. In Jerusalem. So when Christ is warning, Lord, he is in the desert, don't go. Hey, don't go. But where should you where the carcass is? The eagles are surrounding, eating the body of Christ. And the what? The blood of Christ. This is the Lord's Supper he's talking about. And he's talking when he says, when he, he, enters, he enters the kingdom on the will be eating the dead carcass. And these are surrounding the carcass. That's where the Christ, which we are looking for, will be found. So he's predicting about the... the but why the, is the last section represented by the eagle? Uh, I do not want to waste much of your time because this is just supposed to be a lot... A Lord's Supper message for us to enjoy to say this Lord's Supper is really encouraging. Why? Because when God is seeing the prophets being fulfilled, that people, they are now people, suffer exactly on the ten, time, date, and the feast and season. This is pleasing to God. What are they doing today from tonight? They're keeping, they're keeping the feast. In heaven, they are keeping the feast. Come after seven weeks from now, it will be the feast of Pentecost. Where will they be? They will be keeping the feast. So this is what these are they who follow the lamp whithersoever he goes. So tomorrow, when we because this is the first day of the feast, which we have entered in, which is the whole Thursday, it's a convocation. It's a holy coming together. It's a Sabbath. Let's read the verse which says so. In Leviticus chapter 23. You find that it's a Sabbath. So 
we will continue with this lesson of the carcass and the eagle and it's our main subject the whole day we will learn we'll come online to share why God had to pick on that why did he pick on that bed yeah that bed which is a an eagle or in Shona why did he pick on the eagles are called the shiri why did he pick on the the the, the, the shiris or the mashiris or the beds to represent the last church on earth why god did he do that we want to study this whole subject as an entity and understand why did christ ever speak like that because here he has spoken of a real big proverb where the carcass is there will the eagles be gathered ndiko kune mashiri acho ndo kwane kune shiri dzacho dzakakomba mutumbi wacho ehoyo which is the lord's supper he is talking about and here we will learn more why why ego why ego why ego for us to finish i gave you leviticus chapter 23 you found with the verse which will show us now we have entered the feast of unleavened bread the first day of leaven because it started at sunset to, today and also until sunset tomorrow it's a sabbath we want proof of that leviticus 23 verse so I start from verse 5 yeah <clears throat> in the 14th day mm -hmm. of the first month at mm -hmm. even is mm -hmm. the lord's passover yeah and on the 15th day mm -hmm. of the same month mm -hmm. is the feast of unleavened bread unto the lord right so what are we <laughs> eating now we are eating no other food except unleavened bread and with all fresh vegetables or and fresh fruits everything should be fresh from today until tuesday from thursday to tuesday this is what god provided as a clean cleansing method for those who follow him a feast of unleavened bread and that's why he wants it to be kept in Jerusalem because when you go to Jerusalem, no shop is living at all. Everything now has been taken off. Spring cleaning has been done. And all the shops, you won't find bread. It's all unleavened bread right through until Tuesday. That's what we partake. Let's enjoy the Feast of Unleavened Bread while we partake it. But we still have a lesson to learn. Why would he find the eagles surrounding the carcass? on that day 14th day at even of the first month of the year Aviv. may god bless the lesson